Welcome everyone to JavaScript Programming Language Course for Beginners. This video is an introduction to JavaScript. You'll also see the source and reference for this video. I hope you'll be able to follow along this entire JavaScript course. Coming up next are the ESLRs. As you watch this video, please bear in mind about our ESLRs, and these are right thought, right communication, right attitude, right conduct, and right lifestyle. This video is section 2.1 of the JavaScript course. It focuses on discovering what the global scope is and exploring the window object in the browser. So we have some prerequisites here. We need to open Sublime Text, then click File menu, and then choose Save As button, encircled in red. Then save it in htdocs folder, and then js folder, and then chapter 2, and with the file name window.html. That's encircled in blue colors. So we need to prepare this file. At the same time, we need to run the Apache and MySQL servers. So open MAMP application, then start servers that's encircled in green to be able to run the Apache and MySQL servers. So it should, indi it should be indicated green for the servers, which means it's running. Another prerequisite and should be running at the background is the localhost 8888 and then open the console tab as well. In this slide, we have the window.html open in the localhost, as you can see, and the console tab open as well. And the one in black is our sublime text editor which is opened. In this case, since we are working within a browser, our global scope is the window object. And you will discover what window object is at the later part of this video. Before we'll talk about what global scope means, let's talk about what scope means. So we'll open the window.html in Sublime Text. Then let's write these script tags inside of Sublime Text Editor. So we have the opening script, function say hi, open and close parenthesis, then we have the curly bracket, and in the next line we have the var username equals elden, that's with a single quote, then semicolon, alert and inside the open and close parenthesis, the username, the semicolon, and then the closing open, uh, curly brackets, and the closing script tag. So all this functions does is declare a variable called username, and the one in blue that alerts the value of that variable. For clarity, we can define the function this way. We have function say hi. It could be written as var say hi equals function. So please take note of that. That's the difference there. That should be the same or that should be just similar code in there. So we'll save that for now and go to our browser and after save, saving Sublime Text, we'll refresh the browser in there, refresh that one. Then, as you can see in the console, I type say hi, then press the enter key. You can see that one there. And we have the var username equals Elden. Alert username as written in Sublime Text. So. The one in our sublime text is shown now in our console. 
When we type username in the console tab, we get an error. The reason for this, we're accessing it outside. This one here. And from its, that's outside from its lexical scope. When we created the username variable inside of the function, it only exists between these curly brackets, the one encircled in blue. So say hi, the one encircled in green, is created in the outermost layer right between the script tags, yeah, right between the JavaScript tags. So say hi, as you can see encircled in blue, is created in the outermost layer or right between the script tags. Thus, say hi will be a global variable. Okay, since it's outside, it's global variable. Now let's type say hi in the console tab, circled in red, then press the enter key. And we have var username equals Elden, alert username. Write well enough, say hi does exist. The close bracket or sad winky face, encircled there, allows the variable username to go away. Now let's save what we have written so far in the subline text. So there are a number of global variables and global methods that we can use. In the next slide, we'll use the browser as an example. If we type alert hi, encircle there, then press the enter key in the console tab, the localhost 8888 says hi. And that's just equivalent to what we have written in the sublime text. We did not create it inside of our file. It turns out that it's actually in our global scope. Which means that it's accessible from anywhere for anyone. In the case of the browser, in there, the global scope is the window object. And alert high is equal to window dot alert high. They just the same. Thus, the browser will assume window if we don't type it. If we type window dot say hi in the console tab, then localhost eight 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 says Elden. And those are just the same. By creating a global variable, we are putting something on the window object. And that's a window object. Take note of that. Alert works the same way as window.alert, except that we don't need to type window. So these two here will remain will remain as alert without the window. So just as is there, we don't need the window in the alert. And if we are using the variable without using the var keyword other name equals ray, the one in encircled in blue, maybe this will be typing window dot other name equals ray. Other name will still be good enough. If we have, if we save this and refresh in the browser, we'll be able to check in here. It will create the other name variable on the window object. This is why we need to use the var keyword in order to create a variable with scope.
So that's a review of global scope and why these things work the way they do. It's easy for people who are new to JavaScript to forget the var keyword. But if we do that, we're effectively saying window that other name. It's basically the same with this one. Incidentally, if we want to explore the different things on the window object, just type it in the console then. If you type window here, the one encircled in green, then you will have a list of window objects below. And if you scroll down, you will see variable other name ray. That's quite familiar for us. We scroll down some more and you will have some more familiar variables listed at the bottom, such as console and clear and many more window objects listed here. Pretty cool. We just discovered what global scope is and explored the window object in the browser. For our web quest, we will use the internet to search and read more about global scope and window object. Before I will end this video, I hope that you learned something about global scope and window object in JavaScript. Thank you for watching this video.